Hi there! Face here from Nick Jr. Remember me? <laughs> You're watching the podcast where nostalgia comes alive! It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show! <laughs> Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Have you here with us? Thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Devonball. Who today? As always, our co-hosts, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingo. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing great. Hello, everybody. How are you, Jake? Doing great, Matt. Uh, thank you for asking. What do we have for today? Once again, very glad you're with us, everybody. Today's guest is a voice actor. You may remember him as Cliffhanger on Between the Lions. He was also Roger Clodz, Boomer, and Larry in the Disney version. That's right, the Disney version of Doug. He was also Ernest Otter, Munchie Beaver, among others on PB&J Otter. But most famously, from 1994 to 2003, he was the voice of Face. Yes, that face. The one on these VHS tapes. That's right, VHS tape, folks. The one, the one, the one I'm holding up is a kiss for Little Bear, for those of us listening on audio. Uh, these, among others, we'll talk about throughout. I am very delighted to welcome our special guest, Mr. Chris Phillips. Welcome, Chris. Happy to have you here. Thanks for having me, everybody. Good to see you all. So to kick this off, even though I kind of introduced you a little bit, could you tell our audience a bit about yourself and what you do? I don't know. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I do a little of this, a little of that. I've been doing voiceovers for... Uh... It's longer than you guys have been around, probably. It's ridiculous. I, I've been doing it for uh, a little over 30 years now. And, uh, yeah, I also uh, play music. I've been in a number of bands. And uh, I play guitar, a little bass. Uh, and I've been in pop bands, really, sort of uh, heavier pop or whatever uh, nice. around town. And, and I play with a comedian actor, Dennis Leary. And I don't know if you know him or not, but uh, he was on a show called Rescue Me. And uh, he's... It was a stand-up comic for many years in the 90s, uh, 80s and 90s. And I write songs with him or for him. And I guess our big hit, if you can call it that, is called Asshole or The Asshole Song or I'm an Asshole. <laughs> and it's very catchy. It's a toe tapper. And uh, we actually won a couple of awards. I got a gold record for it, a platinum album uh, from Australia, a gold record in Canada. It's crazy. And uh, it's the song they played it on MTV, but they couldn't at first say the name. And the VJs would say, back in the day of MTV being all music, they would say, well, here's a song. We can't tell you what the title is, but they say it like 50 times in the song. <laughs> so I do that. And uh, these years I played still with Dennis, but we do um, benefits every year around Christmas time. No oh, problem. nice. But uh, otherwise, awesome. just voiceovers, voiceovers, voiceovers. And uh, things have been a little slow lately, but, you know sort of the nature of the beast right and things have changed a lot actually in the whole voiceover world so oh yeah, oh, yeah. part of it a lot of things are being recorded from home and everything yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so uh what was your childhood like and how did you grow up well uh, i grew up in manhattan and uh, my dad worked in television he had worked um for cbs for a number of years uh, a company called itc out of uh england and that was very cool. That was in the 60s. And I'd go to his office and the whole place, it looked like something out of Mad Men. It was red carpeting, white chairs with red cushions. All the secretaries wore mini skirts. Everybody smoked. It was very groovy, you know. And uh, so he did that. Then he moved to Columbia Screen Gems. And whenever, wherever he worked, I'd be able to go and visit him at work. And he'd put me in the... Uh, uh, put me in a room where they had the projector and it was like a viewing with the projection room, I guess. But uh, I'd watch TV shows and he'd get me like a Coca-Cola or something and, and I'd sit around and do that. And <clears throat> it was great. Uh, he worked not far from where I went to school so I could visit after, after school. And uh, my grandfather actually, when I was a kid, gave me um, my first camera, my first tape recorder, my first movie camera. So that got me started with doing stuff 
you know, at home with my friends, with my younger sister and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I guess I was sort of training for voiceover work for years before I started, you know. Nice. Every time there would be a day we'd have off from school, like a snow day, which you don't seem to have in New York anymore. But uh, I, w I would do like a fake radio show and drag my sister into it, you know. So that was always cool. We do fake commercials and things. So hmm. I guess that's sort of how that started. As far as the professional end of it goes, uh, I can't remember what happened first, but I had made this, <laughs> I'd made this movie called Beach House. It's a really bad beach movie, and uh, I don't know if you can find it very easily. You probably can, and don't bother looking for it. But uh, <laughs> in any event, a buddy of mine that was also in the movie, a guy named Eddie Brill, and I ended up recording radio spots for the uh, – he and I used to be in a comedy group back at college, and uh, back at Emerson College in Boston. And we were in a comedy group called the Emerson Comedy Workshop. And one of the things that we started doing were audio bits that would play while we could darken the stage and change the set. And so we started doing a lot of that stuff. And then when we made this movie, we did the radio spots, which kind of panned out nicely. And I, I don't know, the, the producer asked me to read for a couple of things. And I did some kids books on tape back in the day. And uh, then I got an agent kind of through that. And that's where things just sort of took off. Nice. That's the long-winded story. So, <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So now, uh, very early on in your career, you voiced a professor and Grumper and Felix to cat the movie. Uh, can right. you talk a bit about that? Yeah. Uh, I grew up watching Felix the Cat, and uh, there were many versions. The original one were the Fleischer Brothers, which were really cool, old black and white uh, cartoons. And uh, then there were these color ones this company Translux put out. And the guy who had <clears throat> done those had a son, um, and his son ended up hiring me. I forgot how I got the audition, but I almost got the voice of Felix as well as the professor. But at the last minute, he gave it to another guy that, well, I don't know if he really sounded as much like Felix as I did at the time. But uh, in any event, that was fine. And the sessions were, were great. I forget the studio we went to, but I ended up meeting other actors that uh, I got close with and uh, had stayed friends with for many, many years. And uh, that was a cool session. Cause hello. We together. Yeah, hello. I thought I'd surprise you. Get out of here. How did that guy get in? <laughs> <laughs> You're hijacking our show again, Bob. Isn't there a bouncer <laughs> at the door here? <laughs> <laughs> DJ Bob Wonka, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yay. Hey, hey, DJ Bob. DJ good, Bob. good friend, DJ Bob. <laughs> Long oh, time yeah. friend. Yeah. I yeah. I only did this because you were texting me because you were like, you I'm looking forward to seeing you and now I'm here. Oh, All yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> In a photo form. <laughs> yes. yes. Hard at work. Yes. <laughs> there we go. There he is. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the gang is now all here. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Great, great to have you as always, Bob. Yes. yes. <laughs> I feel like I hijack your show way too much, but it's okay. <laughs> He's done that quite a bit. Oh, sorry to hear that. Or <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so yeah, I was just talking about myself. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> pretty pretty boring. Yeah. Feel free to fill in all the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> Bob knows me pretty well at this point. Yeah. So. <laughs> I tell him things that he doesn't even know. This is the, oh, remember, it's true. <laughs> so, yeah, there's one instinct I remember about this, this short lived show you did. And you remember I was on the phone with you and we found it out of nowhere? Yeah. I was talking to, to Bob and said there was this cartoon I had done that never actually officially got released. And uh, we had done a whole season of it. And it just, it, didn't click for some reason, for various reasons, I guess. And as I'm talking to Bob, I said, so I don't know if I'll ever see it again or where the heck. And Bob's like, I found it. I just got it. <laughs> they texted me but the, it, uh, the but address. It wasn't, it wasn't one or two of them. It was literally all the whole, of them. It was yeah. the whole thing? <laughs> oh, wow. So, wow. Yeah. So that's the lesson. Speak up and you'll get stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, so a couple a couple years before you got 
face. You were an you were an announcer for Cartoon Network very early right. on in the days. Yeah. What was it? What was it like doing uh, Cartoon Network? Because this was like right as it was launching back in exactly. 1992. <clears throat> I had done a few spots for the launch. I you know forget. I guess my agent uh, at the time. Actually, I don't even think I had. I was between agents. I think, and uh, a guy at a studio said hey they're auditioning for this this new network and uh i ended up doing some promo spots before it actually even started like be on the lookout for you know kind of thing and uh once they got rolling i they started hiring me uh to do voiceovers but i didn't do it in my own voice i i was doing it in more of a voice like this an older guy coming up next it's the flintstones you know kind of thing and so Everybody from the Cartoon Network was based out of Atlanta, and I only dealt, dealt with them um, on the phone, you know, as a phone patch thing in a studio. So I'd been doing it for about a year or so, and even though I talk in my regular voice, I was doing this all the time. And I, I ended up touring, going on the road with Dennis and, uh, and our band, and we stopped in Atlanta, and I got everybody from the Cartoon Network in to the show. And afterwards, they said, wow, it's, it's great to meet you, but you're so much younger than we thought. We heard your voice and thought you were a lot older. And I was like, yeah, but this is my regular voice. I was putting that other one on and you could hear it. But they were like, yeah, we still thought you were older. But that was really cool. <laughs> they said, try to figure out who we were, who we are. And I, I it was like, too tough. Everybody was there. We had just finished the show. My mind was spinning and nobody sounded like they did on the phone. So, mm. <laughs> but that was great. And I had that job for a number of years. That was a lot of fun. And uh, it was nice to be at the beginning of that so nice yeah, cartoon it was it you know anything to do with cartoons or well media of any kind but cartoons especially yes and uh speaking of uh uh voiceover roles one of your longest running roles was of course voicing face for many years on nick jr can you kind of describe the audition <laughs> process for that role sure um i got gotten the call i went to the audition and uh it was interesting because normally you stand up and there's a podium with a script, but this audition for some reason I had a table and a little, uh, like a little desk. And I sat at that. It was very relaxing. And I think the first, the voice that I did was a little closer to like a Barney kind of thing, you know, Barney yeah. was big back then. And I was trying to do like a modified, I did a couple of different ones and they, they liked that. But the one thing in the script, they wrote, uh, like, here's another cartoon or here's Gullah Gullah Island or something. Doo -doo -doo. And I guess people said do de do at the audition, but for some weird reason, I just decided to do the trumpet thing. And I think that caught their ear. And uh, I went into a big board meeting at Nickelodeon. And they said, we really love you, but we're not sure of the voice. Some people like it, some people don't. And they took a little tape recorder out and set it in the middle of the table. And I read the same script over and over again, doing different voices. And like half of the table would like one voice and the other half would go, what else you got? And I'd read something else and they'd say, we like that. But then the other half would say, what else you got? And I did so many voices. And finally at the end, they were like, well, I, I think we have enough. That's good. And they're literally wrapping up the tape recorder and I'm literally seeing the gig go away. And uh, the last, suddenly I went, well, what about this voice? You know, and came out with that, the face voice. And they went, hey, and the guy wrapping up the tape recorder suddenly started rewinding it like, yeah, it's great. Let's get that down. And, uh, and I booked it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. You know, at the audition, yes. they had shown me a demo, I guess, with a British guy doing it. And he did it in a very soft, slow voice, talking like this with a lot of spaces between. And it was kind of weird and creepy. For some reason, that really hit me like, I got to get this gig. There's something weird and creepy about it. And, you know, uh, people have, I've read things that people have said about face and some people are like, it kind of creeps me out, just his face. And I get that, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. This, there's this Instagram video about like, um, like a parody of face. And they're like, hi there, face here. Does everybody like anime now? Like, he's mm -hmm. like talking to millennials. It's so funny. I'll show it to you. <laughs> oh my gosh it's weird how people have done their own voices on face bits and things and no yeah. like they reanimated it so oh it's really like a new thing it's so funny wow but, mm. oh wow <laughs> i know they've uh they tried bringing face back with a, a show that was uh short-lived but uh yeah yeah they should have yeah. you know 
Must it, got be. Too, it got too Keegan, I think. Was he more than I? Yeah, I would have thought, yeah. 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 It's it's a shame. Yeah, it sort of took the whole idea of face and uh, changed it, and it was not the same. They turned it yeah. into more of a uh, a VJ. Yeah, yeah like exactly, a... exactly. Yeah, yeah. I really like where face do some kind of like a coming up like promos where he, where oh, he yeah. like face mentioned the Blues Clues, Weakest Castle, Go Go on Low Bear. You know, oh, I, love, yeah, I, love, yeah. I, love, I love those promos. Oh yes, especially <laughs> when so great. When, Especially when he interacting with the characters. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. right. Philomena Fly. Philomena yeah. Fly. And that one time where Blue, Blue, where Blue, Blue was like on the ones. screen. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. But my favorite one is when he talks to Little Bill. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, yes. and Little yeah. Bill, Little Bill yeah. like the trumpet with faith. Yes. I don't even know huh. if I remember that one. I like really? wow. I like yeah. the one for uh, Bob the Builder when Face sings like part of the Bob the Builder theme song. Bob the Builder. Oh right, oh, that's a that's a later one. Yeah. yeah, that's a later one. Yeah, that must have been one of the last ones I did. I guess. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, they, they didn't even the, know the song at that point. <laughs> these yeah. these guys these guys go deep. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> hey, do you in that case, do you remember where I left my keys? <laughs> 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 no, I no, I I don't think so. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> Bob, <laughs> help! <laughs> you didn't put uh, tracking on it. Hey, <laughs> tracking on everything. That's... Shoes, you know, <laughs> tissues. Yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yes. So uh, years uh, yeah. later, yes. <laughs> no, no, so no, no, you. Yeah. <laughs> so years later, um, you actually got to come back to a voice face for a few Nickelodeon really projects. Can you talk a bit about that? Well, there were just I can only remember like one or two, I guess. One, uh, yeah. One, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and that was like an out of the blue thing, which was pretty cool. For it was for New Year's Eve. That's right. Yeah. I think. Yeah. His face was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. right. Face was yes. drunk. Yes. I remember that. Too, yeah. I think. We're we're not kidding oh about this, gosh. folks. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at it. I'm sure it's somewhere, but yes, <laughs> it was you know, it was face and stick stickly. I think it was. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah. It was Another. Paul Christie as stick stickly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't seen Paul him for so years. Much. He's a great guy. I think I. I think I. Gotta get we gotta get the two of you together on either show to just I would love it. That's that. the only way I get to get together with any old friends and podcasts. <laughs> Reunions right. and things. Reunion. Yeah, yeah, that was fun when I got to do the P B and J Auto reunion for my podcast. That was fun with that all of was you. Awesome. Oh my god. Yeah, because some of the, the, the kids in P B and J were little kids at the time. And suddenly, you know, we're doing this podcast, and they're all grown up. I know. And I somehow stayed the same. So I don't know how that happened. Ah <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're we're all two thousands. Well, except for Bob, because he was in the, he was a nineties kid. But we're all yeah. either. Either, either, either way, we all grew up with Face. We, we all did yeah, yeah. on TV or on, or on these old VHS tapes. Yay! Yes, that's, yes, that's, yes. Right. That's, that's right. VHS tapes, folks. I still have mine. Yes, yes. me too. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you, you still have a like a VHS player? I do. I I got one a few a number of years back actually that has USB connections, so I can transfer. Oh, I don't. Oh, I don't have one oh, of those. Hmm. Yeah, it's I didn't, great. I didn't well, even know you came out with one of those. Yeah. They did, and and also I have this other thing that I could just hook up to the back of the VHS with, like the RCA plugs. Yeah, yeah, that'll yeah, go right. Like a little box that does it. Yeah, right. It's a go-between thing, mm. and that's great too. And you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I thought, great, I got nothing but. Time I remember you telling. I remember you telling me that. And I was like, didn't not, do one. Not he's one. Not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh well, I like to wait till it gets really busy and then start a project like that. <laughs> 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 yep. Uh, so, uh, moving on from Nick Jr. Nickelodeon, you lent your voices to the characters of Roger Klutz, Boomer, and Larry on the Disney version of Doug. 
That's right. Disney version, people. Uh, what what was that? Doing that show like because for those who don't know, it was originally on Nickelodeon, but then it moved to Disney. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, in fact, uh, I had originally auditioned for the original version, hmm. and uh, I got a couple of callbacks, and I forgot who I read for, but they already had a few voices. They already had Billy West signed up, and um, they had had, uh, I think he was the Honey Nut Cheerio B at the time, and they had oh, wow. uh, Fred signed up for uh, for Skeeter and a couple, of, and doing the music and all, and his partner Dan, and um and I don't, as I say, I don't remember what I had to audition for, but things had gone well and we got along very well. The, you know, Jim and the producers and, and everybody. And I, and once the show got rolling, that's when I guess this, they had started another cartoon and that was the one that didn't make it onto the air that we did a whole season of. And I got to know everybody very well and they got to know me in the various voices that I do. So uh, that, that sort of began the the real relationship there with Jumbo Pictures, and um, once Doug sort of wrapped on Nickelodeon, they got made that deal to go over to ABC, and uh, Billy had just moved to California. He didn't want to do phone patches. He was asking for a lot of money, and you know, so they started to, to look around, and they asked me. And I originally read for both Roger and Doug, and once again, I was that close to also getting Doug. But uh, they went with somebody else, and um, and I did Roger plus a bunch of other characters, and then that spun off work-wise for me to do PB and J Otter, and uh, that was great, and I got to do a bunch of voices on that show as well as Ernest the Father Otter, yes, and Munchie Beaver, and oh, love Munchie, yeah. he's one of my favorites yeah. on that show. Yeah, you know that uh, eats a lot of wood. <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> But that was yeah. great, and working with those oh, guys was so much fun. And uh, oh yeah, Jim Jenkins, who created Doug and PBJ, like come on, he's he's the best. Yes. He's oh, amazing. I love Jim. Amazing. That previous time, cast uh, of ours, he's he's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, he has been. Uh, yeah. He came to a session one day, and stepped into the booth with me, and we're chatting, and all of a sudden, I kind of paid attention to what he was wearing. He was wearing white, kind of long shorts, and the white T-shirt with a green V-neck sweater, and I went. Hey, wait a minute, you're Doug. And he went, yeah, I wrote the whole thing about me and my life and the names of the street corners, which I guess you all know all this, but uh, our names are friends of his and, and the Roger character and Patty and, you know, so that's where it all came together. But suddenly looking at him and it's like, oh my God, you're a real life Doug. <laughs> you know, it was cool. <laughs> that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. I love the original yes. title. I love the original title for Disney's Doug, and they had to change it because it looked wrong in the TV guide. You remember really? what it? You remember what it was originally called? Brand Spank I mean, and New Doug. Yeah, but in the oh uh, yeah, in the TV that's guide, right. In the TV guide, it only showed up as Brand Spank. Hmm. <laughs> so, the spank Doug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What no. kind of S and M show is this? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of like, no. No, what do you know? We, Jim was like, we yeah, we need to change it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking this is spanktastic. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Disney's Doug rolls off the tongue. We like yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, Doug, PBJ are wonderful shows. Uh, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> what was it like to work on Doug's first movie? That was kind of cool. The whole thing was uh, was was a bit. I mean, the sessions were sort of similar, um, but uh, you know, the one weird thing uh, about the sessions, or one thing about the session, when they did Doug for Nickelodeon, apparently, the whole cast got together in the booth and read the scripts, you know, scene by scene or whatever live off of, and they worked off of each other and i would have loved to had that set up for when we did the other cartoons for everything else we worked individually uh except on pb and j otter when i was the character captain crane i got to work uh, with jackie hoffman uh who played captain uh, mrs crane and so we got to work off of each other and do stuff but that was the only time and jackie's great she's so funny and nutty and uh, she's terrific haven't seen her for a while, also, but uh, but she's terrific. She's working like crazy. In all the years, I've never spoken to her. Really? Huh. We've never been in touch. She's the only one. Hmm. Um, Did we ever get in and, touch? Find her? Or? 
Her and Bruce Bailey John Kim are the two that I really can't find from. Wow, Bruce is the nicest guy in the world too. I I don't know what he's doing these days or or where he lives or anything, but uh, uh but he's a real sweet guy. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Those, those Jackie guys. is fun. I guess Jackie's yeah. too busy or something, but yeah, she she's doing a lot of like on camera stuff now. Right. Forget but, I saw that she's going to be in. I don't know if it's a new sitcom or she's got something current that's started or about to start. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Nice. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> but uh, yes. Hmm. So what else can I tell you about? <laughs> uh, how about uh, how about Between the Lions, voicing Cliffhanger and a few other characters? Oh, uh, that was a great job. Uh, a show like that was just terrific. It was, you know, that and Sesame Street were just two really great shows. You know, yes, was, love those shows. It, yes, so yeah, they're very between the lines, like Chris and Norman, you know, and, and the rest of the creative team. <sighs> for the show. Chris is so great, wonderful guys. You know, I didn't even realize Chris's resume when I started working with him uh, that he was one of the original guys for with working with National Lampoon, and a friend of mine's father is a cartoonist, Arnold Roth. My friend is Adam Roth, and uh, his father uh, was part of the original National Lampoon, too, as an artist. Ooh. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I guess it was not until I saw a documentary on all that that I realized my friend's dad was in it, who I've known for so well for so many years, and Chris, who I've known well for so many years. So that that was nutty. But, um, but yeah, I remember his, Chris's father, Bennett Cerf, uh, put out all those Dr. Seuss books his publishing company and his name was always on the books uh, that's what started me off reading as a kid my favorite ben and cure thing is he's on what's my line yeah, yeah. and yeah. watching that was a treat he's and... very fun when he talks about doing something with the the family over the weekend or whatever i always think well chris is in there you know <laughs> my fa my favorite thing is i watched one of the episodes with chris and that was a treat Oh wow. Oh, oh wow. That's, that's, great. that's great. That's wonderful. Love Chris. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's Chris sorry, he's the best. Uh but yeah, Between Lines, such a wonderful, like I mean, there's so many there's so many moments, there's, there's so many reasons why Between Lines is such a amazing oh, and wonderful without a doubt. show. It, without it's doubt. just so Yeah. Those little you know, uh, Kid, you with know, Fred the, Newman, the Lions, just, you know, Fred Newman, you know, learn kids about reading. You know, it's such a oh yeah. yeah. I got to do then, one character that was in the some scenes with the Lions throughout one of the episodes. It was a little mouse, uh, an Irish mouse. Oh and, wow! Uh, and that was really that was great to to do one of those. And I did an on camera uh, for um, for some of those. It was the Adventures of Moby Duck. And oh, I yeah. did the announcer, The Adventures yeah. of Bobby Duck, as well as I was in them. As, That's uh, awesome. Mr. Oh, I should know this name because he's more of a famous name from Peter Pan. Mr. Uh, he worked with uh, the captain, uh, shoot, Sea uh, Breeze or Sea something or in any yeah. event. I had a little chin beard and a cap and a black and white stripe. Yeah, I really looked at that sailor look, you know, huh. Mr. Starbird, That's Mr. Uh, shoot. Well, in any event. Those were great to do. I worked with Michael. Um, oh, I'm forgetting his last name right now. Michael Frith. Yeah. Michael yes. Frith. Yeah, Michael. Yes. Yeah. And he was great. And that was like the only on-camera thing he did, I believe, as well. So it was cool that oh, we wow. got to do it oh, together. Wow. And there was awesome. this place, the the big giant duck or something out in Long Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right out there, and you walk in, you walk inside into the duck, and it's just a gift shop, really. So it's one big duck with a gift shop, and all this like sort of farm area around it, or just space around it but uh, that's where we shot and it was really cool and somewhere around here i think i still have a big giant duck mug or whatever oh wow oh, that's fine. <laughs> wow that's awesome yeah yeah but it was yeah, cool the, yeah the cliffhanger segments they're so fun to watch <laughs> I, I was so surprised great. that that was the voice that they they went for to be honest with you at first i i thought it was going to be kind of more of a this type of guy or something you know but uh, they were like yeah let's play with it and i did one thing or another and then they were like so they maybe dumb him down a bit. No, you know, a cliffhanger and the, you know, sort of that guy. <laughs> and, uh, and that was great. And I can't, can't believe that went over so well and became as popular as it. Wasn't it on Family Guy or something? Yeah, they did a Family Guy 
a little parody of it. Stewie was they were talking and then there was a flashback as they do on the family guy all the time. Mm -hmm. And Stewie was I forget who the actress was, but he was pulling her face back like a human facelift as she got out of a lim limo and he's holding on and he says, Can't hold on much longer and I think <laughs> falls off and I was like, What when I saw that. It was it was great. It's like, yay. Uh -huh. Somebody was watching. <laughs> that's that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> You know, you know, you haven't made it unless you've been parodied on Family Guy. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, great. so moving back to uh, Nickelodeon briefly, moving yeah. on to some of your later projects, you did the sing singing voice for Mr. Grouper and voice a number of other characters in Bubble Guppies. Right. It's just been a long time since I've seen that. Uh, Me too. What was working on that? <laughs> <laughs> what was working on that like? That was a lot of fun. Um, we started off in the studio and then through the year it's, we did, I forget how many seasons we did, uh, but then it wrapped up and it seemed like that was it. And, um, at one of the rap parties, I get, or a rap party for, um, uh, Butterbeans Cafe, which was the same group of guys that, that put, uh, bubble guppies together, uh, at a rap party, they came up to me and said, Hey, guess what? Nickelodeon wants to do another season or two of bubble guppies. It's like, we got the band back. It was great. But, uh, you know, they the, the kids grow up that did the voices of the various... Yeah, so they had to recast them, yeah. So, yeah, and that would happen even during a season or a couple of seasons, you know, uh, before the break. But uh, but that was great. Um, bringing that back was so much fun, and we fell right back into place. And then we started doing sessions online. And it was a little weird at first, but that, you know, worked out. <laughs> you know, nice. so it has for the whole business. You know, right, yeah, matter. it's a blessing and a curse, yes. exactly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, 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 public companies love that show. So, um, yeah, now, uh, yes, uh, you also voice characters for series such as uh, Team Umizumi and, and like we mentioned earlier, Bar Beans Cafe. What were those shows like for you? Umizumi was a lot of fun. I come in as a replacement, uh, for Dormouse, so it, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Narciso was the original voice, and uh. He couldn't finish doing them for various reasons and all. So uh, I came in and they said, well, you don't have to do an imitation of Joe. You can do a little. Then I fooled around. They picked a voice. And once I started doing that, uh, they started calling me up for other characters. Uh, I remember Silly Bear and Zill, I think, was an evil Zill or something. And various, like, bad guys or goofy guys. And, and that was great. It was a nice crew working on that and studio that i you know all the studios you get to know everybody at the studio so it's great for a while you're working at one place on a project and then you're somewhere else on a project and sometimes the engineers move back and forth from studio to studio and uh so it's always a lot of fun and uh butterbeans cafe yeah that as i said started off you know with the same guys from uh uh, uh bubble guppies and i think once we started they said they've already signed on for a second season so we did two seasons kind of back to back which was great so i knew okay i'm, I'm working for two seasons so that's good and then it kind of kept going for a while but uh but butterbeans was different i i wasn't in every episode uh there were these twin uh monkeys spork and spatch and um uh, i uh i don't know i would do I would sometimes do the voices back and forth. Sometimes I do all of Spork, sometimes all of Spork, depending on who was running the session at the time. But uh, we would just sit around and laugh a lot in those sessions. Same thing with Bubble Guppies. Uh, when there'd be a new character coming in, I'd throw out voices, and once everybody started laughing, it was like, that's the voice, you know, so. <laughs> and it, they were great to work with, those guys. That's wonderful. And another one of the later shows you voiced uh, characters for was the PBS series Pinkalicious and Peterific. Uh, what was what was that like? That was cool. That was a whole different group of people, different studio and all that. Um, that, uh, you know, again, you work individually with the uh, the producer, director. But, um, but that was kind of cool. I was uh, Mr. Uh, oh, geez, I was going to say Grumpfish or Grouper, but I forget that he was a the school principal, I think. Oh, nice. Plus a, a few other little characters here and there. I guess I, you know I should have boned up on my own resume before doing this interview, but to remember <laughs> every, all the names and stuff. 
but uh but we have bob here just to fill in those blanks and you know <laughs> and you know i i never even heard of that show until you started working on it or maybe i knew you when it premiered i don't remember yeah but i didn't know the series until i started working the series of books until i it's uh, such a good show like it's, it's yeah there's a nice gentleness it. to it and uh yeah yeah and the animation is cool it's different yeah uh, yeah and it's got a, all the writers are sesame writers so like they mm. know that kind of yeah yeah the gentle mindfulness approach to it it's really nice mm -hmm. the girl who did the voice of pinkalicious was uh originally one you know at the very beginnings of bubble guppies when the two little fish come out and say the the title of the thing whatever it is you know whatever the title is that was that that same girl that did that Oh, oh wow. wow! Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Wow. that's cool. Yeah, so she was getting older, and her mom would always bring her to the sessions and stuff because she was young, you know, at the time, and uh, and it was very sweet. The, the it was just a whole nice vibe doing that. that yeah, that's that's great. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's wonderful. So, yeah. <laughs> we we have to we have to talk about cartoon lagoon at some point because. That got quite a resurgence too. That's kind of cool. I that was something I kind of wish that would t have taken off. You know. Well, it, he, well, Pat and Manny are trying to. They have a whole season that never got released, so they're gradually releasing that again. So we're getting. I got to check those out because I don't even remember how many seasons we were doing, and I don't know if they've reused or and taken outtakes. Now that stuff. now that more things are public domain hat is like oh, yeah. recutting things and yeah wow. that's kind of cool we had so much fun again another session sessions with lots of laughs in it and uh you know manny wrote pretty much all those scripts i think or most of them and and uh so we would would not be watching them and making comments live you know they'd all be kind of pre-written and during the sessions, we might throw in a line or ad lib something, or you know, goofy things would happen uh, that would make it into the show, which was great. But uh, yeah, it was mystery science theater animation version, and uh, and I thought it was terrific. You know, some, uh, some amazing puppetry on that show too. Uh, yeah, it just it looked great, and it was fast paced and and goofy, and and I thought that the comments during the the cartoons were terrific. You know. <laughs> and for those that don't know some of the puppeteers on that show are um some of the puppeteers and puppet builders are Michael Shufak. Uh, Michael, and, yes, he's great. Uh, mm -hmm. Noel and uh, oh, yeah, Fra no. Frankie Cordero did a couple of them. I so, love Frankie Cordero. Frankie, yeah, yeah. It's a very if it, it's a very niche thing, but if you like weird stuff, that's the way to go. Or yeah. Lagoon, look it up if you get a chance. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 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 Of course. So now, uh, currently, you continue to do some promo voice work for for Nick Jr. What's that like for you? Uh, well, I I'm not doing so much anymore because they just did a rebranding recently. But uh, but that that uh, has been great. I've been doing that actually for for years. I uh, I was the voice of Nickelodeon many years ago and uh and then i forgot what i did after that then when that sort of ended i came back and did <clears throat> nicktoons <clears throat> the nicktoons network oh yeah <clears throat> and i did you know that for a number of years and then i did odd and end nick and nick jr stuff and that sort of rolled into regular promos for nick jr and um and that was great that uh, it was a, a lot of a lot of work a lot of fun some great producers and um that again turned into just doing it at home but they did a rebranding and they wanted to get more some more younger voices in there that they had said it to sound more like your your hip babysitter or an older brother or sister so, <laughs> you know. but it was a good long run and nice. uh, i remember i remember yeah. you called you called me from a session one time that was fun oh right wow that's right you were doing some blues clues and new stuff yeah that's right you uh -huh. had me you had me in the other room with the engineer <laughs> yeah 
I should have done more of that kind of stuff. That's funny. I remember years ago I did some commercials for uh, the cereal Total, Total brand cereal. Like, how many bowls do you eat, need of Total to, to equal one bowl of Total? How many bowls or whatever? And uh, and I was doing with a, a bunch of spots with men, a bunch of spots with women. And I remember bringing an old, my old phone at the time and try to videotape some of the session. And, uh, and it was really cool because instead of just looking at a, like a video screen, they projected it onto a huge screen. And this, the booth was actually a huge room that I was in. And they would project them on a movie screen. And I would, you know, do my part live to the to tape. And I tried videotaping a couple of the sessions. And they sort of came out, you know, early video cameras on the phone were, you know, fair to Midland at best. But, uh, but that was great. Yeah, I... I should have brought my phones into a lot of sessions. And well, I don't know if you were even mm. allowed to. I think you just did it for me just because. But yeah, still. <laughs> yeah I think yeah. usually it's probably frowned upon, especially if it's a product that hasn't come out yeah. yet. But, uh, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> um, what, a, a couple of days ago, um, me and the guys over here were watching like a bunch of old promos, and we found one for a Sesame Street video, and it was... You, I didn't know you did promos for Sesame Street content. I I didn't know either. <laughs> I don't it was for uh, it was for it was for a video called Elmo Palooza, and I yes heard love yeah, Elmo Palooza. I love that video. Oh I'm yeah, like, Dak, Dak I Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. know how that uh, happened, I didn't even know yeah, that until you just mentioned it. Wow. I I know. I hadn't thought. I remember Elmo Palooza doing this. I have to look that up and see what I can find. There we go. We, but the weirdest huh. one, the weirdest promo that you did that connects to me was that radio DJ toy of all things. Remember I told you right. that. Full, remember I told you that full circle moment. Like that. You toy, sent me the the commercial. I think I'd forgotten I had done that. That toy <laughs> was the that toy was the thing that got me into the whole broadcasting thing. So. So it, there you go, folks. If you want somebody to blame, it's that toy. And it's your, <laughs> it's your fault because if I didn't see the commercial, I probably wouldn't get the toy. Right. <clears throat> well, like <clears throat> when I was a, a kid, probably around your age, when you saw that ad, <clears throat> my folks got me, <clears throat> for some reason, a microphone with a stand that plugged into a little tiny speaker. So it was like a more of an old fashioned version of the same thing. Probably so that's what got like, me started. Probably from like Radio Shack or somewhere, somewhere yeah. like that. Sounds about right. <clears throat> I remember it was like red plastic, but the stand was sort of, it. I don't think it was really metal, you know, but because it, it was pretty lightweight. I guess it was a plastic stand, but yeah, it was cool. And I just yeah. was talking away in the living room or whatever and just my folks going like, okay, he's destined for something big. Or, well. <laughs> or he's just nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with the I'll go with the latter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tried to make it work. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it certainly has. So, right. <laughs> so as we're getting closer, wrapping up here, uh, we talked a lot about your work in the past. I feel like we really haven't asked this question much the last couple months. But uh, <clears throat> could you could you share any projects you're currently working on? Well, um, uh, uh, Robert and Johnny that did. Um, uh, Bubble Guppies and all that have a, another cartoon they're working on called uh, Super Duper Bunny League. And I'm in a number of those episodes, you know, a few spattered, you know, around here. I and can't there, wait but... to see that when that airs. Hmm. Me too. Get... I uh, just, just I did one of those about a month or so ago um, with a bigger character. A lot of the, the earlier, the, a lot of the other episodes, I'm a, a character with a few lines here and there, some filler people and, and all. And that's always a lot of fun. And uh, so I did that plus a, another character. But otherwise, that's kind of it. I haven't been doing as much. A couple of spots here and there for people, uh, you know. Can't sort of... uh, on the DJ Bob Show Christmas yes, special. Yes, of course. And, and yes. a special that we worked on a year, Love about that a year ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was fun. Like, that was I, fun. That was fun. Yeah. Those that don't know, we... Uh, uh, Chris, uh, Bob, and I, we worked on a uh, radio special. It was about, what, a year yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, it was part of that, Not too. Not this past yeah. Christmas, the yeah. year, year before so that. And Jake and I uh, kind of for... did, like, crowd voices. And yeah. A yeah. <laughs> couple, couple other people <laughs> did, too. 
I like more go. background yeah. voices. Yeah, that yeah. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. that was that was them and a couple others, I think. Kid um, did a no, couple. Sid yeah. did a yeah. few. Um, yeah. Chris Chris Thomas Hayes was also in it as yeah. well as uh, uh, Shimulak. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, yeah, yeah, and Tara. It yeah. was if you yeah, if you if you're in if you're in the Pittsburgh area and you listen to uh, Jump on a five point three around Christmas time, not this past year, but the year before twenty twenty two, that was on the air, and that I'll make I'll welcome. make them ru- I'll make them run so it long. again, run it again. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> look be out like for a tra- be like a DJ you're... Bob show trans like a holiday. Right. Well, no, like well, no, that, well, no, that was a, that was its own separate thing. But no, yeah, that, they, that was yeah. so fun. I I actually hopped on last second, um, like literally last second. Yeah. I, I like it was a week, but it was a week. It was a week before. It was a week before we were gonna get it in. Yeah. And I, right. And, and yeah. I te- I texted yeah. I texted Matt and I was like, so my producer bailed. Can you? Yeah. Just- could you? Could you? Step in for me. Yeah, like they need like, yeah. something. They need something by this day, and I was like, "Well, I'm not gonna bail out." So no, no. But a lot of late nights it, on that one. Oh yeah, I'll a lot it. of late nights. But it. Was, I can't believe you got it all so together so... in that short a time. I can't either. Looking back, I I can't <laughs> yeah. either. Yeah. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. But yeah, look, uh, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, look out for it this Christmas because we're chances are they're probably gonna be running it again. Uh, yeah, just do it. It's called. Do it. It's entitled. It's it's just entitled. Bo- it's entitled Bobby G's Holiday House Party. Um, certainly a wonderful production. We had a lot of fun working on it. Um, so Bobby as... G's spanking new. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. If we if we if we want if we wanted to do another one, that would probably be the title of it. I think it has to be. Um, <laughs> but then they would. But then they would get us. They would get mad at us because it's a family radio. Because it's a family radio station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, look out! Look out for it. It really is a wonderful special we did. Certainly a lot of fun. So as we are about to wrap up here, this last question that Chris is about to ask is one we ask every guest. Go ahead, Chris. Thanks, Matt. So this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think of? Or in your own words, how do you define the word nostalgia? Hmm. Well, nostalgia, I guess it's, it is stuff from the past, but I always equate it with an emotion too. You know, uh, I get nostalgic about things, you know? So, uh, to me, nostalgia in a way is my video collection, my audio and video collection. The greatest thing about, um, I, I was nostalgic about stuff almost as it was running or nostalgic about old days as they were happening. But uh, the coolest thing about my career was that as I started to get into voiceover work, I started to work with all the people I grew up watching on TV or hearing on the radio. That you were nostalgic yeah. for. like that. that you... I was totally nostalgic for. And these guys couldn't believe I knew as much as I did. They would say, like, how old are you again? And I just said, <laughs> you know, your, your resume is my video collection. You know? and, uh, and that was a thrill. So I would get nostalgic at all those sessions that I'd work with those guys on. And to be able to call them my friends, you know, was just a thrill and, and wonderful. And, you know, I get nostalgic about a lot, actually. I'm, we do I am too, Mr. Yes. Nostalgia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 We, we do, do too, it. after all, it's in the title, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. It's in the title, after all, yes. Yes. There you go. Yep. So great. We were to end off. Yes. Yeah, cool. Well, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was a blast. Oh, Chris, yes. my pleasure. Yes, thank you. Thank you again, Chris. Thank you so much uh, thank for what you you've yes. done. And, um... Jake, thank you. And Bob, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> and, thank you, and thank you very much for being on. And thank you so much for what you've done. Uh, be, a par- be a part of our lives. The way you've done uh, is part, part of our nostalgic world. And I keep up, keep up great work we're doing now. I cannot wait what's next in store for you. Uh, thanks so much. You know, whenever I meet somebody, you know, various ages, actually, once they find out I did face, they're like, oh, my God, you don't understand. That's my my whole childhood, my life. And I feel like I get more excited about it than they are. I know that feeling. I've, I've had that, yeah. that feeling, you know, in this business yep. so much. And uh, yeah. and to me, that's yeah. just the greatest. So, yes, absolutely. I'm pleased, yeah, I'm yeah, pleased and course, a pleasure, pleasure to be part of everybody's life. That I oh, that I touched yes. and uh, and the cleaning hours, no <laughs> yes. and cliffhanger yes. and lots of other uh, things you've done. So many over the years. So. Yes. Well, keep in touch, Chris. I'll let you know when this goes up. 
great. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank sorry. To enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Take care, everybody. Yeah, Bye. 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 See you later. <laughs> Bye. Uh, you, can't end, you can't end it off better than face. <laughs> yeah. Know. No, but it is, it is goodbye from us. Uh, thank you, Bob, for coming back and uh, being yes, a Bob. part of this. this and kind of, kind of facilitating that one for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Bob yeah. kind of yes. helped yes. Thank put you. us in touch. Thank you for that. Uh, even though I again previously worked with him in yeah. the past it was we absolutely nice. absolutely enjoyed our time with chris phillips uh that's the end of this episode i uh, hope you'll join us again uh links to uh our socials are this the description down below and uh until and we rest of what chris phillips you know was on social yep. media and everything else you know that'll also be in the description down below but uh Hope you'll join us again. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. For me, Matt Bingo, Chris Bixby, DJ Bob, and Jake Deffenbaugh. Jake, take us out. What do we say? Yes, keep nostalgia alive. Okay, everyone. See you next time. See ya. Bye. 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 Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye bye.